Welcome to DMOT Garage. Well, we're back working on the 54. Actually, no, we're not. We're not working on the 54 today. We're working on something else. Let's come and have a look-see. Look in the corner. Something's been uncovered and it is the 57 Oval. I thought it was a 56, but it's actually a 57. Well, manufactured in 56. Um, yeah, the ID tag actually said 57 on it early. Anyway, we're working back on this. I decided my wife's going to kill me <laughs> unless I unless I start doing some work on it. So yeah, I'm going to try to do a few hours a week and just try to knock out all the welding. Uh, what I've done already this morning is I just wanted to get these door gaps a little bit better. And they were a little tight on this side. And the other side was, well, I mean, pretty much whatever. That's about three mil, which is about I'd say the factory gap. Now, in order to do that, I put a turnbuckle in here and you can actually turn that in or out, which will actually, because obviously the heater channels haven't been welded in yet. And I think in the last episode before we went and got the 52 barn door ambulance, we were playing around with welding up the, this corner down in here. So that was the last bit that we got done. You can see in there. So I've just got to grind back those welds and make this little corner section in here, which we should be able to knock that out pretty quickly. And then obviously we've got that area over here in there to repair. But these are ready to weld. I've, I've only tacked this in position, but obviously we haven't welded the two together here. So I wanted to try to get this gap perfect first before we start laying all that down. So. I reckon, and it's amazing, one half of a turn, you can see here, if I put that like that, at the moment now you've got about a, yeah, I'd say two and a half, three mil gap on that, but check this out, if I just give this a twist, you only have to do that, and then watch this, now it's going to be bigger, look at that, by a lot, so we'll go back again, because I think it was actually better where it was. There you go. So that's, I reckon, now obviously we've got to pull it up a bit too. I reckon that's about where it needs to be right there. So yeah, let's continue working on this thing. There's a lot, there's still a lot of body work on it from, I'm not sure if you guys had remembered, but you know, the the bonnet needs doing, the engine lid, it's got a few little bits and pieces. This, this whole section here is all rotten. There's holes in it. Yeah, there's a, there's a fit. The guards are absolutely, you know, they need tons of work on those too. So I thought, why not? Let's get some, let's get some work done on it. Right, so after a little bit of progress, you can see here, the door gap is lining up nicely. And we have welded the heater channels to this section here. So that's all in. We've also done the back. We've got a crap, a crap load of grinding to do because we've got to get all these welds back down. And then we've also gone along the back there. And we've also stitched the corner in there and the stitched the corner in the back. But there's still a lot of welding to do. We've got to do, put this patch on here now. Um, you can see with a little bit of adjustment on that turnbuckle, I got this to line up perfect. So that's, that's excellent. We've got this section now to do here. And unfortunately, it's a little bit higher than the rust has gone higher than the panel itself, but that's going to live like that. We've just got a little patch up here we're going to have to fix up. But I'm just going to put that entire piece in. I think it might be just easier to do that. And we'll chop that out and put some new metal in it. So, yeah, that'll work well. Let's do it. All right, so we've got that piece cut out now. And I've just put a bit of primer on this guy. That's going to, that's the, uh, from the heater channel, we've got to thread that through and uh, tack it in position. You can see the end of it rotted off, but I just ended up putting a little tube on it. So we can uh, thread that through. And we'll just go and weld that into position. There we go, guys. We've got that sucker tacked in. I've got a couple of little patches. I've got to make a little patch just here and a little tiny one there. Then we can bend this flap over. So we can emulate that little section there and plug weld it across the bottom. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nice and solid now. A uh, little bit of work, that's for sure. Anyway, let's uh, continue. We've got to do some grinding in a minute and then plug up these little patches. So we've pretty much got the uh, inside 
A pillar's welded up. I've taken this brace out as well, just to double check the door. And the door fits perfect. Uh, what we're gonna tackle now is this rear section here. Now, I purchased this a long time ago and it's pretty garbage, but we're gonna use it. We'll just chop off most of it. <laughs> I'm not gonna use hardly any of it, to tell you the truth. I think what we'll do is just try and use as much as the original metal as we can. Probably chop it down. I think I've even got a scribe line on it. Yeah, I do. So we've got to cut off a couple of sections here and this bottom lip. We don't need any of that. Um, yeah, they're pretty crude. They don't they don't really fit that well. Um, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So yeah, we're just going to ch chop off the excess that we don't need and um, go from there. Obviously, the rust the rust does go around the back here. You can see here. So we want to probably try and use as much as that metal on the side here as we can. And just wrap it around like that. Obviously this has a stud in it here and this doesn't. So yeah, we'll just have a play around with that area. And yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Where, where it's gotten a bit tricky is this bit in here. I just had to make this little section up here. That, that was in one of the last videos we did. but. We've got a lot of grinding of welds back as well to do in here. Obviously still inside there as well. And then we'll get over to the other side. All right, let's uh, keep playing around with this bit. A few moments later. Okay, so this is what we've come up with so far. Um, only because we've got a lot of rot in this section here. So I'm just taking the panel up a bit further. We did have to delete one of the studs and also cut the bolt off because 56, 57s don't have that. So anyway, made a scribe line across here and we're also gonna trim off the bottom of this because I don't think that lip is supposed to be there either. So we'll just cut that straight across. But it's looking good. I did have to go and do a bit more work to this area here. Their pressings just aren't, uh, they don't have a definite line in them the same as the original one here. So I had to go and put this into the vise and, and really get in there and make a hard line and then curve that little section there like the factory one so that was actually terrible it, it was never going to work so it took me you know a good 20 minutes to sort of fix that up on the panel i mean this is the sort of thing with replacement panels you're never going to get them perfect you, you have to work on them and that's why people uh, always seem to bitch and moan about replacement stuff thinking that it's, they're going to just cut and weld in and it's going to be good and that's never the case you have to work on the metal to get them perfect so that's a classic example right there all right, well, we'll bu buzz this off and uh, then we're almost ready to get this little section welded in. Righto, fellas, and we are tacked in position. You can see um, we've got a little bit of work just now, what happens with the door here? This is actually sunken in. Obviously, you've got to allow for the seals, which is going to push the door back out. So all this is good because it's all original, but obviously we have two pieces of aftermarket metal. Now, you can see that's actually sticking out further than that one. I haven't actually welded this to the bottom yet, so I have a bit of flexibility to move it in and out. But I've got a feeling when I did this repair on the door, this part of the door is actually kicked out slightly. So we're going to have to do a little bit of manipulating to get that curvature perfect so that it'll marry it up because I think this is actually really good. And then all I've done around the back there is just, you can come up, you can see where I've, obviously nothing's been ground back yet. But at least that part's done. I'll finish this off uh, tomorrow because it's getting late now and metal finish all that and, and then uh, we can move on to the other side at least this side's done um, i've still got to grind all that back too so right we've taken the wheel off and uh you can see uh <laughs> yeah all this has to get cut out we've got a new a new piece to put in and i've got that little bit of a bulkhead behind the back here that's just hanging on so we're just gonna snap those spot welds off and i think they're actually quite weak anyway so Give that a quick cut off. Sometimes you can just fatigue it. There you go. 
No need to drill out spot welds sometimes. You can just fatigue the metal and you can see out it comes. Uh, easy way to get them off. All right, we've got a little bit of cleaning up on this to do. Another little tip, just trying to get parts that are being spot welded on. You can just wriggle them back and forth and it will fatigue the spot weld behind it. Just do that. Sometimes it's enough to break them free. And a little tappy. There you go. You can see what I've done. I haven't cut to the line yet because we want it slowly creep to it. So. I'm just pushing down on the base here. It's all about the fitment. Now obviously along here we're going to put some spot welds as well. So we've got the back prepared. I've actually put the heater tube back in. Primer inside, primer inside there as well. And actually we'll probably spray some top coat in that as well before we weld this on. Um, some holes obviously. We're going to cut this bottom lip off, but for now we're just going to leave it on there. And I've just got a little tiny repair here to do in the corner before I can slot that in. And then we can do the final trim on this. Uh, everything seems to be lining up pretty good so far. We're going to have to fold this lip over, which is going to be uh, interesting. This area here is quite damaged, so... I've pulled out it as much as I can with it. It's going to need more work later, but that's okay. We're slowly getting there. But, you know, this stage, it's a lot of just eyeballing and marking and eyeballing, and you don't want to go and cut too much off, and then you're going to have a huge gap and have issues. So just take your time. Make sure it's down against the bottom, and, you know, it's obviously going to flex in a little bit too as we push on it. Okie dokie fellas, we are welding away. I'm just finishing off just around the bead across there, running a few spotties and I've got to go along the bottom now, press all this in. She's getting there. These ones to go and we're finished. Oh, so the front section is finito and we now need to work on this mess here. <laughs> and boy, is it messy. Basically what's happened, this, this entire section here, well, you know what, this entire panel's actually had a good old whack even up through here. It's not good. But what I've done, I've salvaged, this is a piece of, of this piece or this section, which I got off one of Oven Boy's um, 68s actually. We chopped it out. And the idea is because this line is just all wavy and I mean, you're never gonna be able to get it 100% straight. I just thought I'll replace it with new metal that actually has the right curve in it. And it, you know, I'll just that right there like that and chop that entire, well, weld that entire section in. And then we can replace this. You can see where I've actually made a mark on that already, but you know, this is pretty bad. Then that section up here, we're also gonna replace this too. Cause you can see it's all, sunken in it's had an impact here at some stage so yeah that whole part there i have another graft again off the same donor car which is this piece here i'll go and sandblast and clean it up um, but that's going to go like that and we're going to graft that piece in as well so this panel here is going to be a lot of work but we've got to do it this is this is what happens so first off what we'll do here is just mark this and cut this section out and get this new piece welded in. Let's do it. Okay, we've got we've got it marked out. Let's chop her out. There's some toasty metal in there. Get inside there and put some kill rust in that. 
for sure. Righto guys, so we're on to the other side of the vehicle and as you can see here, I've made this little weird ass little piece that's gonna go into here. We're gonna weld that in, spot weld it in. It's got all sorts of weird angles and stuff going on here. But we'll make it work. Don't you worry about that. That's gonna be one of the last bits inside here and then we've got to bring it out to the other side and repair the outer panel. And then we can start taking all this bracing out because I am smacking my head into this thing a hundred times a day and it's, uh, you know, it's not good for the brain cells. Anyway, let's keep uh, welding this piece in. So we've got to grind all these welds back, but at least that bottom plate's in. Really hard spot to weld. I did take out the couple of cross members too because I couldn't get in here. <laughs> uh, we're going to fix up this outer section now, which is this piece here. So we'll put our primer inside it and yeah, we've got to, you know, just get the lines lined up at the top up there and the side and we should be, I think what I'll do first is just tack it at the top, leave the bottom uh, exposed or not tack so I can move it in and out. And then we've got to shut the door and make sure that this B pillar lines up with the door. Yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll just tack this at the top and see what our alignment's like. Let's just shut this door. I just want to see what our alignment's doing here. Yeah, not good. Okay, so we were too open, which means we've got to move it that way. Okay, that's all right. Let's see what that's going to do. Okay, so that's tightened it up. That's that's actually right on the money, right there. So we've got it tacked. You can see what happened down here. Now, obviously, all that section's getting cut out, but it, it ended up growing out pretty pretty big. So I think I just cut a little bit too mature, too much material off. In that situation when your gap just gets real big and you're trying to MIG it up, you can actually use the copper and, and pop it behind it just so you can start getting the tacks to work. This thing works really well. Or you can put a strip behind it, but at least the curves are, of that's pretty good now. And if we shut the door, you'll see that the gap is, is pretty much bang on. So. That worked out well. We're nice and level here, all the way up. Obviously, this door still needs a bit of work. It's got some ripples and bits and pieces in it, but that's all right. That's that's the body stage later on. Yeah, you can see we've got a nice, nice gap all the way down. So yeah, we'll start finishing off this section here and then we can completely weld up that, grind it back and call it good and keep moving. Then we've got this section over here to do. That part there is the next part we've got to cut out after we repair the rest of this. Right, hey guys, after a whole lot of welding and a whole lot of grinding, <laughs> we're done. I've just gone through along there, welded that up. Now, obviously, we're going to be cutting the bottom of this straight off anyway to replace this whole section, but this has come out pretty good here. That section there, unfortunately, it's dipped in a little bit and I can't get to it from this side to smash it out, unfortunately. So I'll have to get my stud puller and just try and pull this area out just a little bit more. Look, it's just got a little bit of a dip there. I mean, I don't like using a lot of filler. I mean, you could just literally go straight over it and you'd be fine. But uh, I will try to tap that out a little bit. That's the telltale sign, those little dark patches on the side of the weld that you've got a low spot. All that's pretty flat here. So that's all good. Uh, yeah, it came in really nice. And of course, when you shut the door, We've got a nice gap. So, yeah, happy with that indeed. Now, what we need to do now is get the next section and get it prepared, and we'll go from there. Let's grab it. I just figured for now, we're gonna weld this piece in first and then tackle uh, this section, only because I wanna try to use as much as this metal as I can and delete most of this crappy stuff here. So, uh, what, what we're gonna do, now the holes don't, exactly line up but it's not a big deal because i can modify the guards themselves to to you know we're about probably two three mil out in some of the positions where they welded it 
but we'll line up the top one and get that right and then we can sort out the other two down here so I'm going to try I'm going to leave this metal on there and weld it back over to here just because this is actually damaged through here anyway so less bodywork I've scribed a line through here let's just chop this piece out now and we can uh, get this one welded in like about there little doovie whackers and a whole lot of grit and dirt and not too bad in there you can see that uh, you're never ever going to get all the rust out of these cars even if they're sandblasted you know right between the panels in there you know it's just it you would have to completely disassemble everything to get it all out but you know we can get some acid in there and soak it all into the crack again you're slowing it down you're not stopping it completely that's just the way it is anyway that's good that's uh, taken that piece out and now we can treat all this and keep going okay we've got a prepared rust free area now uh, and some primer both sides what we're going to do just to start off now this is actually bent in you can see that this has to be about here so i'm not going to cut it back yet otherwise i'll end up with a huge gap so I'm just going to tack it right there because I've got all this section all nicely lined up and this lined up. So I'm going to whack a tack just up here and then we can just address this section here. So a little bit of tomfoolery and shenanigans to get it in position. Oh, hello, Sebastian. What are you doing here? I've got my little helper over here, guys. Where is he? Where are you? Say hello to YouTube. Yeah, you gotta come this way a bit more. This way. Look, get over there. Look, uh, yeah, just say hi, hi YouTube. Hi. <laughs> All right, let's get. Now I've got my little friend, and he's called Minky. Oh, oh, look, there's little Minky. That's Sebastian's friend, Minky. Yeah, he's a helper as well. And we've got Chicken Man, of course. You've seen Chicken Man. But, uh, yeah. All right, let's get this thing welded in. So what we're gonna do now is instead of putting this part here in first uh, i decided to do this section here uh, that's ready to go and the reason reason being is i wasn't sure how far this had to go in or out and this you know this would have just been floating so at least this one's got a stamp against the body there and i can get it lined up and then i'll put this in later so we'll Tack this into position, we'll just work on the front edge first here, make sure this is all good. So we've got this one welded and around the corner as well and plugged down the bottom. That's all done. It's still got a bit of a dip in here where it's been welded, so I'm going to have to get the other get to the other side and uh, bring it out. But I'll, I can't really do that until this is welded in because it's obviously you can see it's just flexing around. So next thing we've got to put this piece in. Um, we're going to have to do a couple of stages because it's not quite the right so uh, shape as you'll see here. If I marry that up to where it's got to go, we're a bit out. So, yeah, it's not too flush. I think it's got to actually go there. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a gap through here we're gonna to have to fill in, which is a bit annoying, but uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So I think it actually lives like that. What I'm gonna do is just chop this bottom off because we don't need that. We do need this hole and these ones. And then we'll have to put a guard on and make sure everything lines up. The guard, unfortunately, is pretty beaten up too, so there's going to be a bit of a guesswork into getting, you know, as long as we've got this line here uh, to, to marry everything up with, we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, that's where that's got to go. And we've got to just trim this section back down, cut this off, go from there. 
let's get it done. Okay, so you can see we've got all our lines lined up, top and bottom. But you know, you can see we've got a giant big hole here. So I've probably just left too much material on the donor car when I when I cut it out. No big deal. I've just got to make a little piece here and put it in. But also we've got to pull this panel out a bit further before we cut that line there. So we'll just put a few more tacks in it and keep moving. But it's getting there. Slow and steady wins the race. Right, so there you have it. That's all welded in. We've got to do a little bit of dolly work just on this seam here and then we can flap it back a little bit further but at least it's all welded in and done. We've just got this little section here to put in but I've got to take the wheel, to, wheel off to be able to get to that so we'll get that we'll get that sorted soon. That'll do it for this video. I'm bugging, I'm going inside to have some dinner. Thanks again for the new subscribers and we'll see you in another episode on the 57 Oval Beetle. You.